Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play and Test Broken Sword, uh, testing this out on my new software. Um, so far in the first video it was from some very simple cuts. Um, I'm going to try uh, and improve on it as I go forward. Uh, there was a problem with the first video, um, for some reason there was a, a jump cut or something at the start, so I had to jump cut. Uh, and it, it sounds really strange, but... Um, Bear with me with this LP. Uh, probably what I'll end up doing is after I've done it, I probably will go through it again um, and do it a proper LP. Uh, where I get more used to um, the, the editing progress and all that kind of stuff. So let's continue on, shall we? I have some good memories of this piano. During my first stay here, its keys were literally ravaged by a robust lady called Lady Piermont. I wasn't even interested in piano lessons when it was in to get mom and dad to teach you how to play. There's a boy standing there playing with a thingy. The door is locked. I can't get in there. I pull at the door, but it doesn't open. This is the place where I came across Khan for the first time. The memory of it still gives me the creeps. There's something under the door. I wonder if that's intentional. Alright, so we um, had to go and pick up this paper anyway. Probably not. It's a hotel reservation belonging to a certain Ferdinand Irwin. Double room, one adult, one child. Hiding Irwin in a well-known hotel is not the most creative idea the Parisian police ever had to protect a witness. If I can just get into that room... The door is locked. I can't get in there. All right, let's talk to the boy. Afternoon, boy. Hello. What's that toy you're playing with? It's a Freggy. A Fremmy? Freggy. Don't you know anything? It's a sort of rubber ball. Looks funny. Hello, who are you? I'm George Stobart. That's a weird name. No, it's not. But it is. No, listen. Stobart is a perfectly normal name. Stobby? <laughs> My name is not weird, okay? Stobber, Stobby, Stobbo. Who would have imagined this? I travel halfway around the world to have an argument about my name with a boy with the intelligence of a banana. <laughs> my dad has a better name than you, mister. So, what's his name then? Flap? No, nope. Ferdinand Irvine. Where's your father now? He went out. Told me to wait here, but he ain't come back yet. When did you last see your father? About three hours ago. Nothing seems to have changed around here. Even the receptionist is the same guy. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, monsieur. What can I do for you? I'd like to hire a room, please. Oh, one moment, please. No, I'm afraid we don't have any rooms left. Really? But there doesn't seem to be much going on here. As that might be your first impression, but come the evening, come the guests. This hotel will be busy then. Damn it. Pardon? Never mind, just thinking out loud. Have you recovered from the shock? I beg your pardon? 
I know I shouldn't have let her loose on you, but I had no other option. If you understand. No, uh, no, I don't understand. Lady Piermont, the pianist and magistrate. Ah oh, oui, the madame in violet, the beast, mon ami. Oh, well, she wasn't that bad. A little eccentric, but okay. You are not a target, if you don't mind me saying. I guess you're right. It's a hotel reservation for a person called Ferdinand Irwin. Hi, me again. Hello, Stobby. Listen, would you like to play a little game? Oh yeah, a game. Freggy. Gets boring after a while. Here's the deal. We'll go to the receptionist together. Reptor... what? That man over there. Uh-huh. And there, we're gonna play father and son, alright? Sounds good. Me again. I can see that. What can I do for you this time? I reserved the room. Ah, uh, have you? May I see your reservation? There you go. Mr. Ferdinand Irvine and son? Brian. Arthur. Pardon? Arthur. Brian is his middle name. Okay, the here's the key to room number 122. Thanks. I wish you and your son a pleasant stay. Alright, here we go. <laughs> wow, what am I supposed to say? I find the game that they didn't really put much effort into descriptive of your items. The first picture shows the assassination attempt on Mayor Lemire. A short distance from the action, a person catches my eye, hastily running away She's looking over her shoulder, as if she's been caught doing something wrong. She's a medium-sized slender, obviously wearing a bad wig. Wait a minute, I know that face. Is that Nico? The second picture was taken at night, but I instantly recognized the place it was taken. Mafasan. Some people wearing robes, almost impossible to make out. Somehow I have a feeling that there wasn't a children's birthday party. There's a woman in the middle. She seems to be talking to someone. I have a bad feeling about this. The third picture confirms my instinct. It's a close of the woman. It's Nico! She's about to pull the hood deep over her face. Ivan must have taken the shot just moments earlier. Who's she talking to? An older man is standing next to her. His robe is different from those the others are wearing. It's more elaborate. Around his neck, he's wearing a big brown cross. The Templar's cross! Definitely their leader, Big Boss, has turned his face away from the camera. I can't see who he is. I don't know how Nico got into this mess, but I have to help her as quickly as possible. It's time to get some answers from Nico. Wait a minute, what's this? A parade? There are huge barriers blocking the way to Rougerie. Just my luck. I must find another way. That clown is dressed as a London billboard. At least he doesn't play an accordion. That clown... They don't even notice me. Hello, excuse me, sorry, could I... Hello? They don't even notice me. No way. 
That's sold by the cardboard nose over there. We need the scissors on the balloon. That balloon bursts like a bubble. I like it. The passers-by don't. They look at me even more grimly than that goat that time in Lochmarn. Lochmar. Hello, Sox. My cat's just decided to walk into the At least the there's room. a passage now. <laughs> That's just my luck. Alright, let's save the game. Save it twice. Maybe it's just me, but this trash looks kind of familiar. No, I hate pushing boxes. I never liked dogs. This one somehow reminds me of 20. That mud in Marseille. Marseille! Do I look deranged? Yes, nice doggy. Oh God, thank God for that. I was told that my uncle was part of their cult. Georges, at the time I had no idea that it was the Neo Templars. I only wanted to help him. I infiltrated their order under the false name of Christine Wu to get my uncle out of there. But when I met him, there I was stunned. His eyes were just empty like a dead man's gaze. It was very disturbing. He seemed to have been drugged. But worse than that, he kept stammering the word gate. Do you know what he meant by that? No idea. It's possible that it was just the drugs. That would explain both his gaze and his stammering. Why was your uncle part of the Templars anyway? I guess he couldn't resist the temptation. Temptation? Yes, George. Two million euro. <laughs> hey, on second thought, the Templars aren't such bad folks after all. But this talk about a gate worries me still. But that's probably a result of the drugs. True. It could be. But maybe it has something to do with the Templars' plans. You might be right. Where would you start your investigation? Hmm. The only one who knew about my plan was a good friend of Andre. A good friend? Yes, a friend. Nothing more. What's his name? Jimmy McLough. An English historian, whose main field is the Templars. Why did you let him in? Because he could provide me with inside information about the Order. Have you met him in person? No, I avoided that. After all, it might have been a trap. We only exchanged emails. So he's never actually seen you or heard your voice? No. Do you think he might have given you away? It's possible. Maybe I should pay him a little visit. I don't think that's a good idea, Georges. The Templars are involved with everything. So why not with McLeod? But we can't just sit and wait until the Templars get what they want. Who knows what they're up to this time? Hmm. Where can I find this Jimmy McLaw? He has a mansion in York, England. England, huh? I've never been there. And it means something if there's a place I've never been to. George, please stop bragging. But it's a fact. Where exactly can I find McLaw? As I've said, I've never met him. But as Andre told me... Then we'll never find him. Can't you forget your childish rivalry for one minute? Not for a second. Anyway, you should start at the York Library. McClough is a scholar, so he should be registered there. Maybe you can find his address in the personal file. Take a map at the airport. The library should be on there. Will do. I'd better be going. Wish me luck. Okay, Georges. Take care of yourself. I'll ring you as soon as the plane lands. I can't believe Nico still keeps this old, disgusting thing. Ah. 
And guys, I'm going to call this a video. Um, I've gone on for about 15 minutes and I think this is a good sort of uh, amount of time to edit. So I'm going to call this a video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Save the game. See you next time, guys.